Join with me for the next few minutes while I share with you a series of thumbnail truths that the Lord has laid in my heart to leave with you in these strange and difficult times. My thumbnail this afternoon is taken from Psalm 109 and verse 4 and 5. Let's hear the word of God together. For my love, they are my adversaries, but I gave myself unto prayer, and they have rewarded me evil for good and hatred for my love. Now, as I thought of this text of scripture, there were three things that came to mind. The first thing was this, the description of David's life. He says here in the text, but for my love. He mentions it in verse 4. He mentions it in verse 5. Now, what was he talking about? Was he thinking about his wife? Was he thinking about his kingdom? Was he thinking about being king? Is that what David had in mind? I put it to you that he was thinking of none of those things. I believe that he was thinking about his relationship with God and the outworking of that relationship as far as his life was concerned. Think about the description of David's life. But for my love. You see, David loved the Lord. The Bible says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. David had a love for God. Could I tell you as well that David loved the Lord Jesus Christ? Did you know that the Bible says, If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema. 1 Corinthians 16 and 22. And it's important if you say that you love God and you believe in him, and you're one of his followers, that you also love God's Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you love the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour, you'll also love the Holy Scriptures. You'll have a high reverence and a high regard for the Bible. You see, the psalmist said in a number of occasions, Oh, how I love thy law. You can read about that in Psalm 119. Think of verse 97. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. What was David's guidebook and compass in the journey of life? It was the words of his God that he loved. The words of his Saviour. The words of the book meant a lot to David. He regarded them as precious and pure and powerful words. But David not only loved the Holy Scriptures, he loved the Sabbath. Isaiah the prophet said about delighting thyself in the Sabbath. He loved the sanctuary of God. You can read about that in Psalm 26. He also loved the saints of God. He also loved the souls of men. Remember the Lord Jesus said, Ye have heard that it was said that you're to hate your enemies. But rather I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. You see, it's important when we think of the words, my love. What was David's greatest love in his life? It wasn't the throne. It wasn't his wife and family. It wasn't even himself. It was his relationship with God. And his relationship with God was worked out in such a way that not only did he love God, but he loved the Saviour. He loved the scriptures of truth. He loved the Sabbath. He loved the sanctuary. He loved the saints of God. Remember the Lord Jesus said, By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. Loving the saints is important. It's a reflection of our love for God. And also loving the souls of men. And loving the great doctrine of God's salvation. The psalmist said, Let them that love thy salvation say continually, Let the Lord be magnified. So here's a description of David's life. He was in love with God, in Christ, and the scriptures, and the souls of men, and the saints. And he was in love with the Sabbath and the sanctuary, and he delighted himself in God's salvation. Now what is your greatest love in your life? Not only think of the description of David's life, but think of the dangers in David's life. He says, for my love, they are become my adversaries. You see, David had many adversaries in life's journey. 
An adversary is someone who opposes you, someone who wants to persecute you. And these adversaries, they curse David to his face. They, they criticise David. They complained about David. They condemned David. You have to think of his treatment at the hands of King Saul. Think of his treatment at the hand of Ahithophel, his dear friend and trusted counsellor. Think of his treatment of a man called uh, Dog the Edomite. And I could go on and on. There was many adversaries that rose up against David and said there's no help or hope for him and God. And you see the true Christian man or the true Christian woman who has a genuine love of God in his heart that's expressed not only in his love toward the sovereign but is seen in his attitude and his mindset toward the Lord Jesus and the scriptures and the Sabbath and the sanctuary and the saints and the souls of men. They are hated and despised and persecuted, not because they're criminals or lawbreakers or done anything wrong, but they are despised and hated and, and treated as nothing simply because of their love for God. You see, there's two worldviews. There's a worldview without God and there's a worldview with God. And those have a worldview with God, God right in the centre. A God is creator and maker, a God who is sovereign, a God who is in control, a, a God who is all-powerful, a God who is all-knowing, a God who is thrice holy, a God of wrath, a God of love, a God of forgiveness, a God of grace. That um, mindset is um, the true Christian. Uh, and once he has God in his worldview, then those that don't have God in his worldview want to persecute and oppose and become an adversary to the child of God. And that's the danger that David was thinking about, the danger in David's life. But think finally of the disciplines in David's life. David says, for my love, they are become my adversaries, but I gave myself unto prayer. That's what truly loving your enemies is. Being able to pray for your enemies. Jesus said, pray for them that despitefully uh, persecute you and use you. Now, what is prayer? Think of the word prayer, P-R-A-Y-E-R. -E it has to do with praise. It's praising God for who he is and what he's like and what he's done. And then think about the letter R. It has to do with remission of sins. In true prayer, we confess our sins to God. The Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The true Christian will always mourn over his sin. He'll hate and loathe his own sin. He knows that he sins against the Lord in thought and word and deed. He knows that he's not sinfully perfect. He's not boasting. He, he's very conscious. There's not a just man that liveth and doeth good and sinneth not. Even in the best of his actions, he's still sinning against the Lord and falling short. And, and he's confessing that to God and he's seeking a daily remission of his sins. He knows that the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Think of the letter A. It stands for asking and the true child of God will come confidently to his heavenly father and ask for things. One of the things that the David asked for was help thou me and we can ask for the Lord's help on the life's journey because the Lord is our helper. We can be content with all that he supplies. And then, of course, there's a yielding of ourselves to him, body and soul. Here am I, Lord, as I have said, send me. And it's important that we yield ourselves daily unto the Lord, not only for cleansing, but the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Remember, Paul says, be not drunk with wine, we're in his excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And we've got to ask ourselves to give us the Holy Spirit. Um, remember, of course, uh, the letter E, it stands for eternity. And as we pray, remember we're living in light of eternity. The temporal things are passing, but we live in light of the world to come. And then we think of the other R, and it has to do with redemption. We, we think of God's redemptive purposes, God redeeming us, God preparing us for heaven and the world to come. And here's the great discipline in David's life. David says, but I gave myself to prayer. He had the desire to pray created by the Holy Spirit. He made that decision. I'm going to go to private prayer and I'll pray even about my enemies, those that are adversaries to my soul, those that are despitefully persecuting and using me. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to ask God to bless them. I'm going to ask God to forgive them. I'm going to ask God to help them and make them to see and to understand. 
And I believe that's what David was doing. Not only did he have that desire and make that decision, but he had that discipline in his life. But I gave myself to prayer. It was a deliberate, conscious choice in David's part. And here's the action of a true Christian man. Here's the action of a true Christian woman. On life's journey, if you're being persecuted right now, and thousands are right across the world for Jesus Christ and the testimony of the Word of God, not only an insidious persecution here in Northern Ireland and throughout the United Kingdom, but, but right across the world where there's a, a no-God worldview being held in sway and, and the child of God will be persecuted in some shape or form or fashion. What are we to do? Have a pity party? A rare up and violent reaction, the answer is no. Not taking out the sword or the gun, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And one of the great weapons that we have is the weapon of prayer. And we can cry unto our Heavenly Father. We can pour out our complaint to Him. And that's a good thing to learn. That's what David did. David, whenever he had a complaint, he turned first to the Lord. Do you turn first to the Lord in your complaint? Are you being persecuted right now? Are you being oppressed? Um, maybe a family member, maybe by a work colleague, maybe somebody in governmental or political level. Could I say to you, do what David did. If you love the Lord with all your heart and soul and mind and strength, and you love your neighbour as yourself, and you have many adversaries, give yourself to prayer. Learn to praise. Oh, confess your sin to God and ask for remission of sins. Ask the Lord for things, yield yourself to him, live in light of eternity and remember that you've been redeemed by blood and you've been ready for a great inheritance that God has prepared for you. Give yourself to prayer like David. God bless you this afternoon and thank you for listening.